What's going on everyone, CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise, that is right, welcome back. We are on a uh, nice little two game win streak here, hoping to make it three as we take on MCDC and these Detroit Lions today, boom, boom. If you guys are fired up for some more St. Louis Sentinels franchise content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. And check out my other series too, the SFL. I'm getting a lot of uh, engagement and comments on that. I relocated all 32 teams in the NFL and I am allowing subscribers to join that league as creative players by commenting on the videos. So check it out. It's a pretty good time. But here in Sentinels franchise though, we have been propelled by... A pretty amazing sophomore campaign by J.J. Ford, back-to-back -back NFC Offensive Player of the Week awards, each time going over 300 yards, and my man has slung nine touchdown passes in the last two games to zero interceptions. He is just playing out of his mind right now, and gonna actually just check and see where J.J. Ford stacks up amongst the rest of the quarterbacks in the league. I already see first in a couple categories there, and he really has not let me down. So he is leading the league in passing yards at 897. And look who is number two, Jared Goff at 855, who we play today, as a matter of fact. So a battle of the top two passing quarterbacks in the league should be a fun one. And Ford also leads the league in touchdown passes as well. But it's that one interception that gets me anyone who's been watching me since you know i started on youtube with the cupcake relocation franchise i throw me some picks oh buddy i throw me some picks knocking on wood it's still an early campaign but as of right now I haven't really been throwing too many picks and jj ford is just the face of this franchise and look at all the xp that he is getting for those back-to-back -back offensive player of the week awards JJ is really putting the team on his back and is doing everything he can to hopefully get us into another potential uh, NFC championship. Where's my man Dudley at? I don't think he's really, he hasn't started the season too strong, but uh, yeah, he's not really, where's Dudley? Dudley is, he's got to be down here a ways, huh? Yeah, there he is all the way down here. Only 185 yards so far and two touchdowns, but that's okay. We know Dudley is a Saxonator, and it is only a matter of time before he picks up the pace. And we are 10th in the league right now in offensive yards per game, and we are actually not dead last in defense, which we have been the previous two seasons, so I am definitely happy to see that. And uh, taking on the Lions today, the 1-2 and two Lions don't think that we have played them so far in this franchise. I could be wrong, but it's not really ringing a bell. So let's just take a look at the Lions roster here and see what they're all about and see what they uh, got working. So they got Jared Goff and <laughs> Jameis Winston as the backup QB. Jared Goff, now a superstar X-Factor player. They got Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery and also our old buddy Antonio Gibson who used to be on this team back before we relocated or I guess in the first season that we relocated from Washington. Keith and Carter is the fullback and wide receivers. Can't believe Amon Ross St. Brown is not even a superstar at bare minimum. That is just like DJ Moore last week. That is criminal. Jamison Williams, Darius Slayton, and a couple rookies that the Lions drafted in this uh, previous draft. So they got rookie Michael Shields out of Wisconsin, so possible teammate of our very own George Williams. He was the fourth round pick in this previous draft. And then also Danny Watts out of Auburn with the future starter tag. He was the second round pick in this previous draft. Hunter Henry and Sam Laporta are the tight ends. Pretty good, pretty good room. And then Ryan Scott, the first round pick of the, pre not this previous draft, but 2024 draft. He is developing very, very nicely. Looks to be a pretty good up and coming offensive lineman, I would say, especially in the run blocking department. So got to make sure uh, we hopefully can get back there in the backfield with Jonathan Allen, maybe get some pressure on Goff, but uh, maybe not on the left side. Jonah Jackson, Ohio State Buckeye here on the left side. Frank Ragnow, very good center. Cam Thomas, man, the uh, Detroit Lions offensive line and of course, Panay Sewell. Their offensive line is friggin' stacked. On the defensive side, X-Factor, Aiden Hutchinson. Going to be a very scary sight indeed. 
Jonathan Grenard, no longer a Houston Texan, now on the Detroit Lions in this franchise. And they got DJ Jones and the number one pick, pick 15 in this previous draft, Donovan Hilliard out of UCLA. So Lions, and he's almost, uh, his dev trait should be revealed pretty soon. But the Lions, they might be a scary good team. Don't let that that one and two record fool you. They look pretty good. Darrell Taylor, O'Shane Zimenez as the left linebackers. Bobby Wagner, who's on our team in the SFL, Toronto Thunderbirds, and also Jack Campbell, who is developing very, very nicely up to a superstar player. Malcolm Rodriguez on the right side. And then corners, they got Isaiah Rogers. They got Jeremy Ballard, who's now a two-year player. He looks pretty good. Levi Wallace, Caleb Farley has found his way to Detroit. So decent cornerback room. John Johnson is injured. So Brandon Joseph will be the free safety. CJ Gardner Johnson and Brian Branch. Very, very good strong safeties indeed. Brandon Aubrey is the kicker. And Ryan Wright is the punter. So there are your Detroit Lions. Their overall is not too high but they look to be a kind of a sneaky good team. Coach, we're approaching the end of the first quarter of the season. What more do you need out of J.J. Ford? I really think that J.J. has to carry the team. I mean, he's done that up until this point so far in the season. He's the captain of the ship, Coach Small says, and it's uh, going to be critical that he plays well each game or we're going to have a hard time winning. So the goal today, beat the Lions and throw three touchdowns, three plus touchdowns with J.J. Ford. Remember, we have nine in the previous two games so i don't see any problem with doing that couple upgrades and then we'll dive in it's just really some uh you know role players trovon wiley though he was uh one of our picks later round picks that we took in the draft i believe maybe fifth round i want to say fifth round pick sixth round pick something like that we'll go ahead and give him run stopper he hasn't really seen the field hasn't really been a big Part of our uh, defensive scheme up until this point, but he's young. He's a rookie. Yeah, Georgia Tech, and maybe he'll uh, start to make some plays, get in on the field, having only that normal development definitely does make it a little bit tougher to get some uh, some XP and get developed, but you never know. But hey, we are here in week four, taking on the Detroit Lions. Battle of the two best quarterbacks in the league in terms of passing. If you guys are excited for more St. Louis Sentinels franchise content, please like the video and subscribe. I do drop Madden 24 content weekly, but without further ado, we are going to be away for this one. Let's go ahead and get down to Motor City, Detroit, and get ready for the game. Sent's going to be on defense first, and our defense has been a little sketch, I will say, to start this campaign. Even the games that we have won, you know, have been uh, shootouts and but Jared Goff in a sneaky good, again, you know, the Lions, I think their overall was like 82. But looking through their roster, they look much better than that. And again, Jared Goff is the second leading passer in the NFL behind your quarterback of the St. Louis Sentinels, J.J. Ford. So we'll see what, uh, what uh, Goff and the boys here do to start this one out. They got Jameer Gibbs there in the backfield combination of Gibbs and Montgomery and Gibbs is met there by Jamin Davis, who we have to give him a contract this season. He is up for a contract as well as a lot of other players too. And I think Jamin's earned it. So I'm sure he will get that contract extension. So now golf coming out in the shotgun, going to be a play fake. Yep, absolutely. And tell me that's not a legal touching. There's no way that's a legal touching. And there's no freaking way that Jamison Williams caught that ball. It's holding. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Panay Sewell. That was scary. Wow. So I talked so highly of this uh, offensive line to start. That was a big mistake there by Panay Sewell. And lucky for us, the mistake was made. That's going to be the tight end there, Hunter Henry, who has found his way to Detroit. And that will also bring up a third and inches. And I think in this situation, we are just going to play straight man coverage. Not going to dial on the blitz quite yet. And that's going to be, oh, look at John Allen back there to meet Antonio Gibson. So not even David Montgomery. That was Antonio Gibson, who was on, who was a teammate of Jonathan Allen only a few seasons ago. And Jonathan Allen came screaming in the backfield. And that is not Motor City Dan Campbell. Uh -huh. Definitely. So I guess the Lions fired him in this franchise, which is a little odd. 
Dan is a great head coach, but maybe it just wasn't panning out here in this uh, Madden universe. And Jahan Dotson not able to get anything on the kick return. And here comes J.J. Ford. Such a great sophomore campaign. The, the two-year man now out of Fresno State. Only one interception. I cannot believe that. But that can all change in an instant. I mean, there's, you know, you got me behind the sticks. So don't, don't let the numbers fool you. It's been a good start to the season. But that can all change in the blink of an eye. So we'll start out single back here. Made the focus run outside. But we are going to come out in a passing formation. And look at the tough catch by Terry. That was not an easy catch at all. Last week, Terry burst onto the scene with a buck 30 through the air and two touchdowns. I think uh, Curtis Samuel is actually our leading receiver. Not Terry, but it's a good, a good one-two punch. Nonetheless, two players out of Ohio State really, really doing their thing. Dudley going to get the first down by just a short and a curly. Let's test the edge here with Dudley. Really looking for him to have that uh, good breakout game, but... It's not Dudley's fault when there's just nobody has any interest in the in the running game as far as offensive linemen. I mean, we had no blockers downfield there and not much Dudley can really do in that situation. So still confident in my man. He is still our RB number one for sure. Second and 10 here from the 26. Come out shotgun with a bunch to the right. Scan in the field. We'll check it out to Curtis Samuel, who has a little bit of space to run. Jack Campbell not going to be able to catch up with Samuel. And that will move the chains, getting the ball to the 42. And I mentioned such a great, great wide receiver duo with McLaurin and Samuel. And then you got John Dotson. Then you got George Williams. I am very, very high on our wide receiver room. Right now, I'm not high on the blocking, though, as they're making it very, very hard for Mr. Dudley Saxton. Come on, single back. It's going to be a play action boot to the right. So maybe, oh, McLaurin. We might have him. JJ led him a little bit too far. It was just a bit out of reach as Isaiah Rogers, the corner, had the coverage. And third and nine here. I mean, we don't necessarily have to go something like verticals, but we'll at least come out to start that way. I see Terry getting pressed as well. And also, I mean, there's there's press happening on all sides of the field. So we are we're going to give it. Terry a shot. I saw that safety. Yes, I saw that safety kind of blitz in towards J.J. Ford. So I knew that we had single coverage there on the outside. We were going to have it with McLaurin and Samuel probably. But I saw McLaurin beat his man on press there on the outside. That is what Terry does for an, a living. Isaiah Rogers not going to be able to keep up with him. And it's a huge chunk play for the Sentinels. Not going to abandon this outside run. Let's actually flip the play. Oh, I can't. Okay, I wanted to run to the left. That is not going to be an option. Give me some blockers, please. Sentinels, Andrew Wiley, and all those guys. Dudley only averaging one yard per carry to start this one out. Um, yeah, that's probably not going to get it done. But it's okay. We uh, Last week, I feel like against the Bears, we kind of started off slow. And then Dudley kind of uh, turned the Jets on there. Later stages of the game, and Logan Thomas, our tight end number two. You see that C on his chest. He is a captain on this team, getting it all the way down to the eight. We'll try to run it inside and just kind of see what happens. Oh, got a got a nice block there. Dudley tried to cut it in, cut it back inside to the right. Didn't really work that well. Ball's on the five. We got double slants on the left side. This is a long, methodical drive, taking up most of the first quarter, as a matter of fact. And let's see if we can cap this thing off with some points. We had two receivers there in the vicinity. Samuel and McLaurin. None of them put their hands up. And Aiden Hutchinson now going to go down to uh, the turf. So that's not good for the Lions. He is easily their best pass rusher. And now third and goal here. We got McLaurin on a slant. Bart Burns on a stick route. Um, we're going to try. Burns dives for it. Two-year man out of Texas A&M, your reigning offensive rookie of the year, picking up right where he left off last season, getting the touchdown, putting the Sentinels up, drawing first blood in this one. Drive number two here for the Lions. We'll see what it will yield here. We're going to show blitz, kind of send our guys up. Goff coming out in the strong formation. There's Gibbs making some moves in the middle, making some men miss. Finally is wrapped down, but not until after a gain of eight. And uh, Jameer Gibbs, he, I mean, 
I think the Lions definitely hit on him for sure. I think he's going to be a really, really electric player. We started to see that a lot towards the end of the season in real life. And I think that uh, he has a chance to be, you know, uh, one of the premier running backs in the league. Picking up a first down on that play, Kendall Fuller getting him. And uh, I think we came out in our 4-3 defense, but let's send a little heat. Send a little heat here at Goff. Make him think about this. And, oh, penetration. It's rookie Glenn May out of Washington, our fourth-round pick. He had two sacks in the opening game of the season. Haven't really heard from him too much since then. But he makes a big, big play. Bursting into the backfield to get Gibbs. And that's going to be a wide-open Amon Ross St. Brown. Really hope that we're not going to be calling his name a lot today. And I can't believe he doesn't have superstar or superstar X Factor in this game. Golf coming out with a running back and a fullback here in the backfield. I'm gonna control on Cam Curl the safety, and maybe that was a bad idea because Jamison Williams cooked us, making up for that, uh, or getting his revenge, I should say, from that big catch that got called back earlier due to the holding from Panay Sewell. And now Golf from the 25, getting very, very close to the red zone. He's coming out single back, of course, with uh, Jameer Gibbs behind him. And it's going to be a play fake this time, though. And there is Jamison again. Wide open in the middle of the field. Stopped there by Kendall Fuller. But the Lions are knocking on the door, threatening to score points. End of the first, time of possession definitely in the Sentinels' favor. But the passing yards are near even as Goff is marching his boys down the field. And they got the ball on the four-yard line. So do the Sentinels have... A big goal line stand in them. I don't know. We've seen it before, but it's always, always very tough when you're in this part of the field. Maybe if Jonathan Allen can get some pressure. Nope. It's just going to be Hunter Henry finding the end zone and drawing even on the scoreboard. So I liked that first drive, what our defense did, and the second drive was the complete opposite. So not really sure what to expect from the sense defense. But as long as our offense stays firing on all cylinders, I think we do have a pretty good chance in this one. We need uh, Dudley to get some yards. So why not get him involved in the screen game? That's always a good way to get some yards. And, you know, sometimes it's like basketball. All you got to do is see a couple shots go in, see a couple free throws go in, a layup or two, and you start to kind of pick it up. Sometimes with, when you're a player, all you need is a couple touches. And that will get uh, the mojo flowing. Let's put Samuel on a streak here. Going to be looking probably for McLaurin, though. Um, oh, he's open in the middle of the field. Terry having himself a great game, picking up where he left off last episode. And J.J. Ford now over 100 yards here in the early stages of the second. We'll go draw a play to Dudley here into Lions territory. Just show me something. And there's just it's just so congested down there, man. Give my man some Mucinex because the congestion is real. And I mean, I feel like we just might have to abandon the running game, which I hate to do because it's been such a staple of these last, uh, you know, going back to the latter stages of last season, but it's just not hitting. It's just not hitting right now. Second and 12, we're behind the sticks. So got to pick up uh, some positive here. Bart Burns. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Completely missed time by the linebacker. As I thought Bart Burns was going to be stopped immediately, he actually gets the first. And the question is, what do we do here? Maybe Jahan Dotson on the zig route, but could have Bart Burns sitting down on the curl as well. Um, or maybe, come on, come on, Jahan. Oh, my God. Okay. Jack Campbell going to pick that. We can't even tackle him. Is this going to be a pick six from the linebacker? you got to be. Freaking kidding me. I got to show you guys this replay. I have to show you guys this replay because I had Jahan Dotson getting open. I rolled out to the right and I did not even see Jack Campbell. So initially, if I was quick enough, no, Bart Burns was covered. I mean, Jahan, that's a tight window right there. So I roll out to the right and then here is where I see, okay, Jahan got bumped on his route. But he's going to be breaking free. So the read is there. I just probably should have touched past it. Or maybe led him a little bit more to the right. And Jack Campbell was right there. And J.J. Ford is going to get his second pick on the season. And it's a big one. 
because it ends up being a pick six. Adversity here, but it's nothing that uh, Terry McLaurin and the boys can't overcome. And the way that Dudley's running and how the blocks are just virtually non-existent, it might have to be the Terry McLaurin show today. I don't know. Now our screen's shaking. Some of the away team's receiver icons are hidden during the play. Gotta love to see that. And uh, we are just gonna have to respond. And Jack Campbell is looking like he's gonna be a problem in that Mike linebacker position. Gotta dig deep here, man. This is a very key drive. We're gonna have some crossers on the field, but we're gonna need some protection. And Ooh. Kurt... Mm. <laughs> Who was that coming off of the edge? I don't think it was Aiden Hutchinson, because I believe he he's uh, injured. It was Jonathan Grenard. And, and I gotta go ahead and pull out my once per game PA cross out of the single back X bunch and nasty because right now the momentum's all in the favor of the Lions. So let's hopefully be able to pick this one up, guys. Curtis is there and he catches it. Dropped it in the bucket from board, but our two year pro Will Devlin out of Michigan, our starting center is injured now. So that's probably going to bring in, I would imagine, Ricky Stromberg. So first and 10, I'm going to audible this. I don't like curls in this situation. So I'm going to audible and maybe, just maybe, Dudley can get something going on the ground. He did shake a tackle, but that's, that's going to be holding, isn't it? Oh, God, of course. On Dudley's best run of the afternoon, it's going to be coming back. Holding. And who's in the doghouse? Michael Burton, the fullback. I mean, you're already a fullback, bro. And now Will Devlin won't return either. So that just went from uh, <laughs> bad to worse. And what we could have been way down the field. And now we have to really fight here. Curtis, nice zig route. He's going to have room to run as well. And Curtis gets us well into Lions territory. Momentum still in favor of the Lions as well. So we haven't really been able to chip away at that. See if we can uh, make something good happen. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That wasn't Jack Campbell that time. Not sure who that was. That was uh, the safety there, Brandon Joseph. What do we do here? We are probably not in, or maybe, Joey Sly field goal range. I mean, it would be a tough one. It would be a long one. I probably would go for it, I would imagine. And how about we put Dudley on an out route? Uh, McLaurin or Samuel, someone's going to have single coverage. We're just going to high point it up to Terry. Show me those skills, Terry. Oh, my God. He almost had it. Almost had it. That was a 50-50 ball there. And uh, was it the best decision? But I didn't really see anything that was better. So let's just hopefully make this with Sly. Chip away at this lead slightly. And I might have just missed that. I think I did. Oh, <laughs> I was such a good kicker last season. Joey Sly was the kicker of the year. But I haven't missed one in quite a while. Nickel Blitz, we're going to send a little bit of pressure here. We'll see what Golf does. See if we can finally get uh, somebody there in the backfield. And nope, just a wide open Jamison Williams who is carving us up like a Thanksgiving turkey. And Jared Goff so far is perfect in this one. So have not been able to rattle him in the slightest. Let's send pressure. I'm going to send pressure. Not sure if it's the right move or not, but we're going to do it anyways because something has to change here. Goff is just way too comfortable, and that's going to be... Are you kidding me, man? Are you absolutely kidding me? Hunter Henry avoids the tackle, and uh, it's not looking good for the Sentinels here. And I would say it's kind of our offense, yes, but it's just the defense. This is supposed to be a good defense. But week after week, we see teams put up points. The only game so far this season that we kind of limited a team was that Philly game. And I believe we held them to like, what, 26 maybe, 28. And even that's not like tremendously low. Figure that you uh, got to score here, man. We get the ball back after halftime. So if we could put together a good drive and score, get the ball back after halftime, score. We'll be right back in this thing. We're going to roll out with uh, Ford and Bart Burns is there. Oh, nice block too. Bart, go, Bart, go. He's trying to outrun people and he's finally caught up there by Isaiah Rogers. But I love the coach calls that TE attack for me a lot. You guys know I, I try to uh, go with coach. And look, they want me to run it again. 
Not sure I'm going to do that. Um, but every time they call that, I kind of like to roll out to the left. And usually I either get Bart Burns open or maybe I just roll out with Ford. And uh, right now I got to take some of this clock off. There's too much clock. There's a nice little hole from Dudley. Did close up pretty quick, but it's better than what we've seen so far up until this point. It's going to be the last play before the uh, two-minute warning here. And we're going to go ahead and snap it because I like this play and I want to stay in it. And there is Jahan Dotson. Yes. Clutch, clutch on the catch. Coming out pistol here inside zone to Dudley. And I think he's going to be in. He is. Okay. So at least, you know, the yards aren't there, but at least getting into pay dirt. You got to figure that will boost the confidence of the Saxonator. But the problem here, boys and girls, is the Lions aren't missing any passes. And they have over a minute to score. And uh, our defense hasn't been able to do anything. Maybe maybe pressing some of these receivers. And that's just a terrible kick. I don't know what the heck I'm doing with Sly. Please don't go out of bounds. Thankfully, it is not. And hold on to your freaking britches for this last minute and 15 seconds because I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions march all the way downfield. We got a freaking guest pass and shade inside. That's what we got to do here because that's where Goff has really been making his living and finally gets his first incompletion of the game. And this is actually a very, very good spot for us to be in because we have a chance if we can just somehow dig deep enough and find a way to not let them pick up this first down we have a chance to actually get the ball back with all three timeouts and I feel like we kind of actually need that and it's just going to be Amon Ross St. Brown of course it is why wouldn't it be sure the Lions are going to call a timeout although they're not yet and there it is maybe a blitzer Jamin Davis can you get into the backfield please oh had a shot on golf we almost did Goff wisely throws that ball away because the penetration was there. And now it's second and 10. I feel like, I mean, maybe I should have went pressure again. Let's do, we're going to go press man here. We're going to go press man. These receivers have been cooking. So maybe if we could just kind of jam them up on their routes. And if I have to call Hunter Henry's name one more time, I am going to throw this controller through my TV, and I don't want to do that because my TV was very expensive. Lions going to call a timeout and kick a field goal, so not the worst not the worst possible outcome. They're going to go up by 10 going into the locker room, and we will get the ball back, so we're definitely going to have to strike quick, or strike first, I should say. But a touchdown coming out of the locker room, and our boys are right back in this thing. So uh, not the best of halves, but I'll tell you what, it could be a lot worse. And luckily, J.J. Ford, even though he has that pick six, which definitely was a killer. But aside from that, he is him and McLaurin and Samuel, to an extent, are pretty much carrying the squad. Let's see what the Giants are doing. If we win this game today, and depending on what the Cowboys do, we would be number one in, the, uh, in the, our division, which would be awesome. The NFC East. I need to make our focus. We're going to do run inside. Run outside was not getting the job done. And Jared Goff has just been carving us up every which way. They haven't done too much in the running game. So let's go ahead and go defend medium pass. See if we can please, for the love of God, get Dudley Saxton going. Let's go ahead and motion over Bart Burns here. Get an extra blocker on that left side. And there's Dudley. Okay. Oh, got caught up on Burns, or that could have been a lot more. But I like the way the inside run felt on that one. If I wouldn't have bumped my own player or got, you know, stopped up on my own player, so to speak, that one could have been a huge gainer. JJ Ford dots X Factor is activated. So all passes will be accurate. And Curtis Samuel picking up where he left off in the first half, doing a very, very good job. Getting it all the way down past the 50 on just two plays. This may be four down territory if we don't get this. I do not want to punt the ball back to the lines. We're going to try screen pass to Dudley. So let's see if it can. Oh, Dudley somehow caught it. Buddy, oh my God. Dudley, Dudley, Dudley. Dudley somehow caught that ball. It was a low throw from Ford. And coach wants me to go for it anyways, which I probably was going to do. The question is, do we go 
inside zone to Dudley. I'm thinking that's probably the call here. We're going to ID up. Uh, Jack Campbell's not on the field either. I'm confident Dudley can pick this up, but Curtis Samuel, you got a block, man. I mean, I know you're having a good game, so I can't talk that much crap, but Curtis Samuel, free rusher off of the left side. I mean, I guess it's really, it's not even Samuel. It's not Samuel's responsibility. It is uh, Jarius Powell, our second round pick in the draft. No way he should have double teamed that guy. Just drop back almost like you're pass blocking and give Dudley a chance. Now we're going to give the ball back to the Lions and come away with no points on that drive, man. It, it does not make any sense to me. The logic of these offensive linemen sometimes is just absolutely crazy. So Goff coming out eye form here. See where he decides to go with the ball. Just going to check it down to Jameer Gibbs, and he actually gets hurt on the play. We're going to dial up a little bit of pressure. Going to use her on Quan Martin, just in case it's not a run. It was a run. And what in the... What's going on? What, what? Why can't we stop anybody? David Montgomery's first carry of the game. Should have had him in the backfield. And what are we doing, Sentinels? Look. Right? That Jamin Davis, right? Yeah. Jamin Davis misses a tackle. Okay. Then we got Justin Hayward. He misses a tackle. And then somehow we allow Montgomery to cut back inside. And Hayward does, you know, rebound on the play and get him. But, I mean, what did I say pre-game? I said these Lions were probably going to be tough. And so far, they have been very, very tough. We've gotten virtually no pressure on Goff. We haven't gotten any at all. No sacks in the game. No real pressure at all. I need Justin Hayward to get home on some pressure here. Can he do it? He got very close. Come on, please sack Goff. We can't even sack Goff. Oh, my God. I was about to say. Dude, what, the, the break. What did I accidentally put the, the, the break tackle slider, the break sack slider at 99? I mean, geez, I'm crow. They're breaking tackles left and right. Dante Fowler finally was able to get home, and that was a big one. We really, really needed that one. I'm going to go man, and we are also going to press up here. They got a fullback in the game. Oh, pick, Kendall. That was your shot, brother. Ah! Oh, and nickel blitz again. I just feel good about it. Hayward, can you maybe get home? Oh, there we go. Come on. Somebody please get Goff. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Forcing a throwaway. They are going to take the field goal and go up by 13. But at least the defense is somewhat coherent now in the second half. They're putting, finally getting some pressure on Goff, forcing some errant throws. And uh, now we just got to make sure we can actually do something on offense. Starting out drive number two of the second half. It's going to be inside run to Dudley. And Dudley, okay, has some nice blockers and has the speed to get to the outside. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, Dudley is here. Don't worry. He's here. He wasn't really doing too much in the first half, but, start, you know, starting to come alive. I feel like switching the uh, game plan to inside run was definitely a good idea. But if you guys watched last season, the outside run is where Dudley was earning his keep. So let's go back to Dudley here. And, of course, it's just Jack Campbell because why wouldn't it be? It's been Jack Campbell all freaking game. Second and nine, ball is one yard away from midfield. So who can get open I ooh, was Logan Thomas there for a minute and now we find ourselves in third and long again I don't know man we're gonna go Ohio sale don't know if that's uh let's put Dudley on a streak I would really like these linebackers to kind of take him and maybe have Bart Burns on the curl which with a good pass oh boy um, okay, we got a punt, we got a punt, on third and nine, we got a punt, there's, there's no way that we don't, and maybe with a good defensive stand, could really use a pick from Kendall Fuller, or a forced fumble, or they sing hallelujah, something like that, it's a fumble, pick it up, yes, it's Trovon Wiley, the rookie out of Georgia Tech, 
Okay, that's exactly what we needed. Who laid that hit? Who laid that hit on the ball carrier? I got to see this. Okay, and I don't know why I'm zoomed in so much. So there's Isaiah Rogers, the corner. And the hit was laid out. Was that Benjamin St. Juiced? I think... May, it might have actually been Wiley. I think Wiley got mitts on the pigskin and recovered his own fumble. So that is just the break that we needed. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sentinels are right back in this thing. Go play fake. Boot roll out here. Maybe hit McLaurin on a uh, corner route. Nope. We're just going to check it down to Dudley. Not going to risk anything crazy happening. Dudley picks up eight. All right, we made inside run the game plan focus, so please, and it's just like, I thought that we were supposed to have blocks. I mean, what are we doing here, Sentinels? Frustrating, frustrating stuff. We're gonna go Y stick again. We actually scored on this play earlier, so let's see, it might be Bart again, it's Bart again. Same scoring play as earlier on the stick route. Bart gets his second touchdown of the day, and we are going to draw to within Braden Daniels. Okay, out. Ryan Sweet, who we drafted uh, last, yep. not the previous draft, but the draft before that, never really had a chance to do anything, and now we're going to be up by or down by actually six. My apologies. So now Golf's like, yeah, let me get in the Boy, shotgun and do what I was doing in the first half, but it's just going to be Gibbs on the outside. Did prevent a first down, but it's going to bring up third and extremely short. Nickel Blitz has been working. This will probably be a run, and Jonathan Allen is there to stuff. We got to give this man a contract next episode. He is due for a contract. He only wants a one-year deal. I was looking at it pregame. I'm going to try to bring him in on probably a two. He is 30 years old, but we got to bring him back because he is our anchor on defense. Always in there to stop the runs. And uh, he's like, uh, what's what's something that stops runs? I was thinking X-Lax, but that causes runs. I don't know, man. Look it up. Google it. A medicine that makes you not poop. That's Jonathan Allen because he stops the runs. Okay. Emodium. Okay. That's that's one that helps you stop. That helps stops the run. Emodium. So Jonathan Allen is our Emodium. And Terry McLaurin is our St. Louis savior as he continues to have a big game. Ford going over 300. We're supposed to get three plus touchdowns to help him get more XP and win. But right now, I could care less about that. I just want to score. Because if we score on this drive, we will actually go up by one, assuming I make the extra point. And that is really due in part to our defense finally stepping up in this third quarter. Motion over George Williams. Haven't called his name at all. Kind of forgot he was on this team. See Dudley up the middle. If he can get some good yards and uh, psh, man, if I would have just changed direction and bounced out to the left, I would have had that, but it was kind of like, you know, too little, too late. I was already committed to going to the right. And this could be McLaurin on the drag again. We've called this play a couple times and it's worked out pretty good. Why go away from it? Terry's still going. Maybe he should have just went down. But that's going to bring up third and three. Green pass to Dudley. I see McLaurin getting pressed. I could audible. That safety could blitz down. But I am going to stay with the screen. I like the call. Why not? Dudley wide open. Getting a nice lead block there from Damian Lewis. And Ford at 333 yards. And we are finally, finally starting to put it together here on both sides of the football. Defense and offense. So let's just... Cap this thing off with some points, please. That would be phenomenal. And, oh, man, Jonathan Grenard going to get me. Never even saw him because I was waiting for Bart Burns to get open on his route, which he did, but held on to the ball, kept dropping back way too long. Coach is saying TE attack. I just want you guys to see that. It's not just me. It's a good play. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean we're going to actually get it. But the coach does call this play a lot. I don't like how there's linebackers there on the left side. That's usually where I roll out. So I may actually just drop back on this one. And I'm just going to give it to Dudley. But it was a terrible pass from Ford. And Jack Campbell, who I actually literally hate now in real life, too. 
I mean, look, Dudley, it was a quick decision, but Dudley was open right there. All you gotta do is throw a quick little check down to him. Or maybe it was on Dudley running the route. I'm not sure. But at any rate, Jack Campbell picks it off. And I mean, <laughs> unless our defense, which they've, they have been, they have been stepping up huge in this in this uh, second half. But we're going to need them to, because if the Lions score here, that's probably night-night time. Can somebody get home? We had Chase Young out there in coverage. That'll be a nice catch there from Hunter Henry. Need to stop him here. No doubt about it. I'm going to, again, assume it's a run. I should run commit, but I'm not going to, because I know what would happen if I do that. But I'm going to use Sir see. I use her con that, that's me. I use her controlled cam curl and blitzed him all the way. And that's exactly, that's exactly where cam curl, that would have been his spot on the field. Yeah, and Hunter Henry is just so wide open there. Uh, I'm actually glad that golf changed the play because I didn't like that one bit. Let's see if Jamin Davis can get in the backfield. Nope, it is gonna be Hunter Henry still. First and goal for the Lions and they are set up in prime position to not only score, but also win this game. And it was that last pick from Ford. That shouldn't have happened. That should have never, never happened. But it did happen, and it happened at the worst possible time. But look at Fuller. Oh, you should have stayed in the end zone. No. We've seen a couple pick sixes from Fuller, but how clutch was that? Oh, my God. We now have life. We now have life. We're going to have to drive 96 yards down the field. But Fuller was in prime position there. He was looking for Terrius Slayton, who we never even called his name. And how huge has Kendall Fuller been for us this season? Man, we are in dangerous territory, though. I should have just got the touchback with Fuller, but I didn't. I tried to run it out, and we're going to go draw play to Saxon. And there's, I mean, they dropped all the way back in coverage. And I'll tell you what, brother. If we can just make this the Dudley Saxton show and just give the ball to him, like, you know, pretty much every single time, I would just be happier than a pig in you know what. And can I, uh, I wish I could. Let me audible this to inside zone because uh, I really want to run to the left side there. There's a nice little hole, and I'm confident that Dudley can probably pick this up, and he does, and breaks a tackle. Dudley's still going. Dudley now starting to put it together on the ground at the most crucial time of the game. So let's go screen pass to Dudley here. Still clock not really a factor. I wouldn't say. Can I get a can I get a block, please? Oh, great. And Dudley gets injured. I hate my life. It's not going well. It's going downhill. And uh Yep gonna be the JJ Ford show now all right JJ I need you to put the team on your back just like your freaking Greg Jennings out here and McLaurin is there but it's not a good pass oh boy and Dudley's not gonna come back what is going on here guys okay it's all right third and eight four down territory we got all two downs to work with here so don't gotta pick it up all right here but Curtis is just gonna go ahead and do that anyways and not gonna call a timeout because we really need to score but we can't let uh, too much of this clock be there and now is the time where i'm looking for the st louis savior to step up here there he is middle of the field mclaurin is there still not gonna call a timeout i know i'm uh probably crazy 37 seconds but i'm just not gonna do it no, I threw it to the wrong. Oh, my God. Jack Campbell dropped that. This crunch time here, boys. Second and 10. We're coming out single back because I'm looking for uh, my guy, Bart Burns. And oh, my God. Ford just got sacked. I am going to hit Terry on this corner route one of these days. Mark my freaking words. Can it be now? No, it can't be. This is it. This is ball game. This is ball game. Coach says four verticals. It's probably uh, definitely the right call for sure. And I'm going to have Brian Robinson streak. Probably going to be looking for Terry. 
I would imagine I typically do in these situations. Can you fight forward? He's going to be denied by one yard. Oh, my God, dude. McLaurin is met there by C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Bart Burns, I need you to just get behind and tush push. He was denied by just about one yard. And that is going to be, I'll tell you what, though, hey, <laughs> One bright spot is the Lions had 21 points, or was it 24 even? They had 20-something points going into the locker room at halftime. And our defense did hold them. They only scored 27 points. The problem is that we only scored 21. And we had a couple picks from J.J. Ford to where up until this point of the season... He had been pretty clean. I felt that we, I mean, that that was just a, that was a good game. That's all I can say is that was a good game. Ford nearly at 400 yards, but the problem is he had those two picks and didn't even get his three touchdowns that he needed for his little locker room challenge thing. Goff was good, but I will say that he definitely cooled off in the second half. And then Dudley started to put it together, but will he be out Will it be the Brian Robinson show, or will he be back next week? The Lions never really, beside those couple runs from uh, David Montgomery, they never really got anything going. And how about Terry? He did everything but score a touchdown. Seven catches for a buck 43. Hunter Henry with two touchdowns. And Curtis Samuel also goes over 100. And then Bart Burns with two touchdowns as well. This guy, though, right here, Jack Campbell, I hate him. Two picks could have easily been three. Kendall Fuller had that ginormous pick to, to give us a chance. The only reason why it came down to that last play was because of Kendall Fuller. And unfortunately, we are going to drop to two and two, but that's okay. Still at 500, still a long time to go in the season. NFC East looks to be a little congested, discombobulated like it always is. So I'm confident that the boys will bounce back in the weeks to come. AJ Ford gets an upgrade. Yeah, I would say so. What does he even need to get better in, really? I mean, throwing on the run, he's he's very accurate. I mean, 99 throw power. Come on now. He's got a freaking cannon. Which one gives me throw on the run? We're going to go improviser. That's about the, the one thing that I could say that he needs to improve on. He does get one overall higher, and we get plus one to throw on the run. Okay. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. I was really hoping that we'd be able to get the win this week, but apparently it wasn't in the cards. I mean, it, I would say it was in the cards. It was a, just a game. Like, it was just a game that you lost. That's the nature of this league. Tell them, Coach Smalls. Every team goes in hoping for a win, and uh, at best, half of them end up successful. It's tough out there, but there's plenty of season left. I mean, any given Sunday, like, you're going to lose games. You're, every team is going to lose games, and we got the Dolphins and the Seahawks coming up, so... Not really uh, too excited about that Dolphins game. You know, Tyreek, Jalen Waddle, assuming they're still there. But as of right now, we're first place in the NFC East. We'll see what the Cowboys do, but that's eh, still a lot of season left to go. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.